instruct pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, it <laughs> <laughs> I do just want everybody to uh, know, and I'd announce this, that uh, having problems with the computer now as far as the Zoom feed goes. So uh, we'll see if we can get that uh, kicked on here. Otherwise, we're having some problems. Okay. We'll call the to order. Roll call. Mayor Westgard. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom. Yes. Holtman. Yep. Reese. Yes. No public form. Consent agenda. Any additions or corrections? Not motion to approve. So moved. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Holtman. Yep. <coughs> Thank you. Yes. Tom. Yes. Reese. Yes. A billing permit from Todd Peters. Yep. Everything's in order. Motion to approve. I'll make it. Second. I'll second. Roll call. <coughs> Thank you. Yes. Tom. Yes. Fulton. Yes. Reese. Yes. Okay, we can't take any action, but we're going to go through resolution 2137. Yeah, and actually. What I really want to walk through with you is this packet, the bigger packet that was on the at your seat tonight. So, went through the development agreement with the developers and they're on board with, with virtually all aspects of that. Okay, and we're going to not take action on this tonight because they're, they're still looking at a couple infrastructure things and looking at uh, ways to potentially uh, decrease the cost of some of the infrastructure. They're con concerned about that. but. Uh, other than that, the general concept of the uh, development agreement uh, was was agreeable to them. Dave has has incorporated these changes. Okay. Well, uh, now, a big change to this is actually the property then includes that depot land. Okay. So um, it's described as as outlot 20, then in all of all that depot property. So I included that on on this sheet here tonight, showing the colored uh, area. So it would be everything within the orange would be the property that's included within the development agreement. So also then on this front uh, sheet, where on the right side where it says West Street, I put a little red mark across there. Just know that from that little red mark to the north, the street surface is not in there. It's 205, 210 feet of, of street surface that's not there. And this is, is then a contention about about uh, who would who would be paying for the installation of that? The city had uh, the city could assist that. The developer has has shown some interest in paying, and then they see what the costs are. It may be just a a, a, uh, a combination then about what's uh, how we okay. might fund that. So so. The top of five from the top of oh, what am I trying? Is that Delvos? The, the green and the yellow boxes are Delvos. Yeah. Well, I thought the city had already agreed that we in the development agreement. I thought we were going to extend West Street to their new property. Line. That we we would, and then uh, that showed some interest in, in helping us out with that, and that that would be the. Uh, that point of negotiation yet. I think we can meet somewhere in the middle. But I thought then they were going to take that straight on into the property. Well, that's the other. We had agreed that we were going to do 175 feet in right. in out lot 20. And that's the new part. Oh. So one step right back.
All right. Sorry about that. So again, just looking at the bigger sheets there, these are the same thing that we looked at last time. There's really no additional changes to that. But as we talk with the developer, they want to look at having a, uh, a change, and it, the arc of the cul-de-sac may change some, and the positioning of the structures may change some. They were actually, as of today, tweaking their plan again, looking at, at as you drive into the area, three single-family, uh, standalone single-family homes, two duplexes then on either side and then two looking at two fourplexes down there on the end of the of the coast. So, but so this year they they proposed to do the whole street, right? This yeah. year, okay. right? Well. Well they did. Yes. That was the plan. Yeah. As far as time as timing goes, yeah. That or uh, that they would intend to do the whole street as as part of the development. One of the big changes that they are, are discussing more with the engineer, though, deals with with drainage. And that retention pond up there on the northwest part, on the, well, just above the cold sack, there's a uh, big proposed retaining, uh, retaining basin. Now, what they would like to be able to do is have one larger retaining basin, but have it be even more east. Uh, and if they can get everything to drain over in, into that northeast basin. So they do away are, with the one on the west. Pardon me? Do away with the one on the yeah, west. Yeah, and, and it just it makes for some additional space then that, that they're able to put these uh, these units into. So they're, uh, they're talking through these options now, and we'll talk with the engineer about the possibility of, of having one uh, retention base in there in, instead of the two. They are, and they're, they are really looking at doing that too. That, it's a way to help fill the, fill the low areas, of course, but it's also a way to address some of the environmental stuff that's bringing dirt just to fill the lake. So do they and not get into some of that already? They would still be working on it. They're still working on uh, Levi Thies is their, is their dirt guy, and Levi's still working with them on getting some dirt. Okay, so the, the big sheets are, are just plans like we talked about. The next spreadsheet is the allocation then of, of cost between the city and the developer. So uh, three right right hand columns show the allocation of costs, so for sure the city is responsible for water. And the, uh, the city is responsible for uh, some portion of the of streets and costs associated with that. And then the housing, the affordable housing folks are, are responsible then for the right hand column. What this shows as far as streets basically says uh, it has 47% to the city and 53% to the developer. The city would put in 175 feet in, in outlaw 20 and, and this had the developer paying for the cost of that street extension of West Street. Um, again, probably subject to some negotiations there. As they put that cost together, $69,000 for the street, that one block street extension, and that, that's proposing an issue for them. Plus, it is a city street and actually a local property that, that they don't own. So, so as you. Oh, wait, 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 back up just a bit there. So, Originally, the agreement was kind of going to be that we were going to take West Street from where it stops now on to the entrance to Lot 20. Wasn't that the way it was? Their, their original proposal to us said 175 feet of the street in, in a Lot 20. Which is, they were going to pay for that. No, we were going to pay for that. And, now and then the they, question was how, how to get to that outlet. Right. Well, we were going to do the street to Outlet 20. Is that a yeah, that's what is the total here. The 379 is, is the engineer's estimate on everything. Water, anything pertaining to sewer, anything pertaining to storage, or anything pertaining to streets. And, but that's a uh, that's why those allocations are off to the right as far as who, who should be responsible. Okay, so and it's uh, it's pretty good allocation. They're going to do some work yet on. 
uh, trying to control some of the costs associated with the retention basin and, and that type of stuff that would work on that. And then the question would be uh, West Street. We will continue to negotiate with them then about likely splitting costs. Which, like I say, would be probably better than where we started out. So, Look to the next page. If you want you want you all to be to be well uh, well aware of this, uh, what the what the project costs really are, you know, and it's not just putting in infrastructure. These are uh, well written. Some of them are still are still estimates, but you got the environmental study as well. Then the property cleanup. We commit to do half of the property cleanup up to twelve thousand five hundred. Water infrastructure. We are certainly committed on that. And then the street. And that street number could change. Okay, that engineering number is just at 18 percent, and that's we did, we're not under any contract with any engineers here. But that's an estimate there. But the agreement you know, was to use that due to yeah, we just we're not under contract. With them. And then there'll be some legal fees. They're going to do all the transfer work as far as the property. What's 15 million? 15. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Okay. You want to look it up for you, That's 15 I didn't have. Yeah, there you go. Tax abatement costs, these are what we would, we would commit to as far as tax abatement. Our standard tax abatement program for years one through five does have then an additional 20% tax abatement years six through ten. So those are the costs that are associated with that. And would you base your tax assessment? Is that what you're basing that, that 120 k That's 120000 is an estimate then for each unit. And this is based off of 12 units because they want to give you a, a conservative estimate. Right. But it, it, and it would be between 12 and 16 units. It's based off of 12. The uh, land value, you know, the purchase price of, of the land is proposed to be $10,000. Yeah, which certainly is, is below market, so there's some additional incentive there on land value. So you just put all that together and you see what the total package is. It's a, it certainly is a nice package to do that. But then again, it, it does repay. It, and then it, you see what the property taxes are then on each one of those that are, that are generated each year. And, uh, and then uh, monthly utility fees that are then too as far as fees. Adding utility users to our uh, to our system is always a good thing. So, <laughs> um, this the tax uh, property tax shown for both the abatement and the amount generated. I only showed the city's portion because of course we're the city and that's what we, that's what we care about. Now they actually pay a lot more property taxes than that, but it's the it's the school and the county portion then in addition. Questions? Any comments? Next page, uh, last page again, is, is just thinking about how we, we would fund this, and I guess just to know that there are funds for uh, to be able to to pay this, uh, especially the, the infrastructure, whether it's the general fund, some through sales tax, and then the water sinking fund. We may use that that water sinking fund with water uh, money that we saved over the course of the year to pay off debt, and that's all been paid off. So that's it's just sitting. Sitting there in the secret fund account. Do you write money? Now, as as far as the as far as the housing side of things and the infrastructure down to me, we haven't haven't had any luck yet. But that other than say we got that. $160,000 that we're going to use for water, but we kind of earmarked that for other things. Okay. Um, but, 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 but the governor is real big on this housing thing. She's starting to do some intensive um, funding. Yes. Are you sure yep. there's not something we can do to create this kind of a neighborhood? We, we will certainly be checking that out because actually I want to get that to be the uh, program for Northwest Iowa Lincoln. Uh, cyber stuff, computers, cyber was the best. Nothing about the zoom. Yeah, I guess it's nothing about the zoom. That the infrastructure money out there. Now, I think so too. Now, just just a little update on that on, on infrastructure money, not relating to this. 
that uh, we are applying for that, that economic development federal funds to assist with the uh, extension of the water main through that. And that would be about $480,000. Right. That's all in the next But I can't believe there's not something out here for housing state or federal special state because she's really, she's kicking in some money there. And the one. It was a hundred million dollars. Yeah. So anyway, we need to look, not just she, we all need to. I will keep going. So, with that though, as David is talking with the developers today, we're not going to take any action on this plant. We're still working on some of the infrastructure stuff. So, um, and really, the the push to get rolling with with the project would largely lie with them, and they were okay with with waiting certainly a couple of weeks, maybe a month, and to make sure that everything was in order before we entered into the development. So really, that's where we're at tonight. In the Yeah, I did. Uh, we advertised one appointment uh, to the Planning and Zoning Commission until uh, the remainder of a term in Catherine Richardson's term. Uh, really, it's a really short term uh, appointment actually. It's done at the end of June in 22. Um, Don Hout has, uh, has shown interest in being appointed to Planning and Zoning. That is the we talked to him since yeah. this was posted. Yes, it's in there. I don't know if we're going to do it. Second? Oh, second. We'll go. <coughs> Open. Yes. Please. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Don. Yes. Okay, we have to officially consider the purchase of the backhoe. Yeah, so just uh, up and see, see the numbers in there. We have a a backhoe uh, basically purchased and it's waiting for us and, and Dean gave us a little update about where we're at on that. But uh, looking looking at the numbers, one one hundred nineteen nine fifteen purchase price. There's a little flux in that depending on how we do the buckets. So we'll, we'll talk about the buckets. Uh, and the other thing which was uh, just extremely good news was what we sold the old one for it was twenty seven seven fifty. And that uh, it'll be sitting by the side of the road when I go to Mexico. I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to take a picture. Yeah, take a picture. Plus, yeah. 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 we still got buckets and forks. Yeah. So we still show that. that. So what you want to talk about buckets and forks? Ending? So uh, we got a price on the buckets and forks, uh, on the new bucket fork. Um, instead of buying the weld on attachments. Um, you go with the weld on attachments, then you got to have the bucket sitting there, or the backhoe sitting there, whoever welds it on. It's got a floating mechanism and a uh, flat spot where it automatically goes flat. So if you don't have that welded on there correctly, you can be either have your bucket up too high or you can nose dive it and you're digging. Um, talking with Jeff and stuff, it feel better if we just, uh, you know, maybe just purchase the new snow bucket and new forks. Um, and I can't remember the price. The forks, it showed separate the forks and then the, the what I call the mask. Yeah. Like they'll, they'll come together. together, we won't have to put it together. For those costs, so we were at 48 35 on snow bucket, 35 98 on uh, out forks. <coughs> now, and um, with that, though, they also take off 1452 Correct. A set of blanks was included in the purchase price. So, um, that would come off. Yeah, that, that would come off that original $190,000. I think it would be good to go over with the new piece of equipment. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we ought to cobble it together by welding wax. No, no, no. No. And the other thing to keep in mind is the snow bucket we have now is we've had it for 15 years. Right. It's, it's thin. Usually, if we save 500 bucks, we pay for it. A couple of years later, it costs us 5000 to fix that one. Just for the right I'll make a motion to purchase the back row and the attachments. I'll start that. Roll call. <coughs> uh, 
Um, also, just if I may real quick, I talked to with Brent today, the backhoe that he's going to let us use, and we get to use it up to 200 hours, he can have it here tomorrow or Wednesday. That way we're not stuck without it. How, when, when did they sit that day? It would It'd be it? November when we get our new one. Okay. Now we're in Wolfgang. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom. Yes. Peace. Yes. Okay, we got an automated reading update. Yeah, it's the same, same program that uh, uh, we, we have used since 2013 in this handheld unit that we have right now. They, they aren't going to uh, stop supporting it. Excuse me, at the end of the year, and a couple of, of options. One was a, a drive by option that was much more expensive. And this one they call a walk-by option, but it but it has a uh, an outside antenna that mounts onto the onto your truck. So um, it will operate just really similar to to what we do right now, but hopefully it, it does have a little bit better range and we have this exterior antenna on the truck. So when they're on the side in the back of the house, how good is that? The uh, it, it, it works fine because when we're reading electric meters, I don't know, can they read from a mile away? I mean, three miles away. Really? It, it has best, to do with the best I've done, and depends on the weather too, you know. But I can go out here to Spring Lake Golf Course, and I can pick pick up 120 in the three mile radius. I mean, that's it's pretty good that way. Savings on gas will pay for the whole thing too. Not really, because we still got to be pretty close to get water. Water's the one that we really have a lot more trouble. And uh, this this will be at least as good or better than, than what, what we have and anticipating it to be better. Back in the day, what did it take three days to... to Four guys, three Four, days. Yeah. So, I mean, that... Now you're doing got, it. Yeah. Now we're doing it with two. You can do it with one. It takes a little longer, but I feel... It's no different than texting and driving when you're looking at that and driving down the road. So we used to take two, somebody runs the holder, the other guy drives. So if you see two of us out doing it, that's why we're doing it. Question. No. <laughs> well, I'm just, I then, you, then you know that's what we're doing. Well, that's, you say that in labor cost, eventually, so I think it's sure. the best yeah, one I mean, we can get. Yeah. Uh, the system actually has been real, uh, real good, yeah. good for us, and <coughs> and uh, yeah, we would look to continue it. And say the investment is thirty four hundred dollars. Need a motion to buy that? Yes. I'll make it. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Thank you. Yes. Reese. Yes. Thomas. Yes. <coughs> yep. City administrator report. Not too much. Um. Good. Dean, you, you want to just give a little update about your discussion then with Marty on, on um, um, So I talked with Marty Maurer about the drainage type issue coming from like the uh, campground and uh, Crest Park Drive. Right? Uh, we put... Uh, oh, is that it? Yes, <laughs> except for down here by 175, but it did go over here. Okay. Um, so his recommendations from like the horseshoe, that intake at the horseshoe, his recommendation would be to run a new tile, 18 inch tile, down to the corner in the uh, uh, museum grass area, uh, tie in that tile that goes underneath the uh, Crest Park Drive from the campground. Uh, there's two more tiles there, tie them in and running a new tile, 18 inch tile, down to an intake that is down here uh, by uh, this building down here. Um, and then it'll cross the road, it'll go all the way down to the ditch, and it'll naturally flow to uh, another tile and go out to the north uh, into Larry's field. Um, he said the, the cost of doing something like that at this point <laughs> Uh, with the price of tile is between $45,000 and $50,000. Um, but he said we can still do the, uh, I talked to him again today about doing some 
surface work to get the water to just uh, from inside the campground to run uh, uh, over to where it's naturally going right now to the um, museum area and then it would flow down into that tile that goes down into the swamp area. Um, he didn't have any price on what dirt work would be or what to do there as far as the dirt work. Um, he said that while we were walking there, he did, you could see it, but it just, I don't think it's enough to shove water real fast to go underneath the road, and, uh, Press Park Drive, and then down, uh, down there. I also did talk to uh, Biddy, but Biddy was supposed to get a hold of me and he never, he did not get back to me last week. You're saying it's not going to flow very fast out of that flooded area of the campground? Is that what I'm? Well, it's it's not. It's just not flowing correctly to the north. Right. To that one now. tile right now. But you could do some dirt work to make it flow there a little faster. Like Scott was saying, maybe a a ditch behind the campers to get it flowing a little faster. But then if you dig that ditch down a little bit, uh, when you get to that tile line. You might have to dry, drop that tile line down in under the street a little bit more, then which in turn you gotta you kind of gotta cut everything down to move it going to the north. You got electric utilities along and there. You got a lot of utilities. Make more sense to go under the road by the clinic down the hill. That's a shorter distance. Yeah. Yes. Um, Still do the same thing. Yeah. So you're talking in between. Um, <coughs> Keys and the keys. keys. Yes, yeah. you can do that. Because there's a tile right now. Because that's what it's doing now. Um, just <clears> not <throat> very fast because it's there's not enough fall from inside the campground to get it real fast down there. Um, so we would save a lot by going through keys if that's a possibility. If that's a possibility, <coughs> and I also look at it. You get down there where that um, swamp area used to be. You don't know what is being built down there yet. So are you going to just shove a little bit more water faster towards whatever that is? Unshaven. There's a tile now. I mean, right now. Water's going there anyway. Well, there's, yeah. a, there's already a problem yeah. there with water, and we're not too sure what they haven't covered up, right? Correct. And the uh, tile Marty, there is broken under the highway, is that right? Correct. Right there? That's what I'm told. Uh, Marty says maybe the camera that going down there, down that hill, to see what type of issues there may be down that mm -hmm. tile and where it actually comes out or or what the problem is. The one where he thought just run an 18 inch tile, once it gets down to uh, that building, it's the Cook's building, Cook's building um, there's that big tile there, uh, nothing runs on the ground until it gets, and then it gets to the ditch, then it runs to the west a little bit, uh, and then under the road and to the north, um, but that, I mean, gonna, then you won't have, you're not going through any new businesses or nothing like that, it's just, right. there's all the utilities and the cost of the pipe. Right. So it's going to increase the flow to Larry's land by a lot, or well, you minimal? Get most of it done. It'll be, it, yeah, it'll be a, quite a bit, um, <clears throat> whatever you're, you're taking that's going into the, into the campground now, uh, that flows from like the horseshoe over or just down in there, all that uh, would end up going down cross over to Larry's instead of going into the into the lake, right? Um, to flood out, you know, basically flooding out those campsites. Camp sites. Where was the area where Larry had the DNR digging this year? Is that around this area? It's right by where they put in all that that fell to the west of the uh, yeah, far the west the, of the uh, car wash. Oh, by the our side of the by that. That's where that tile's broke under the, <coughs> under the island. And they, boy, they still plan on fixing that. They're working with the DOT about getting the permit. Okay. Um, just a couple things for you. Uh, a couple more things. We had planned on... Well, hang on, just a minute. I have a question about this. So, what are we, what is our next step here? So, we're still on work with Marty and... Uh, and, and figure out what we can do with dirt work to... Try to alleviate all that water in the campground. Um, okay. 
Because you don't know, need to get them. What's that? He probably isn't. The, somebody else has to do the dirt work, I would imagine. Yeah, I don't he know. He won't do it. Not, but he, not he, all of it. Anyway. He knows drainage. Oh, you know. yeah. Exactly. And so are we going to retain him as some kind of a consultant thing at the moment? No, I what don't know. I'm just asking him questions right at this point. Um, try to get some better handle on on the campgrounds flooding. Exactly. Can you determine the elevation of the campground? I thought at one time the northwest part of the campground did taper it to go north. Yeah. Yes. And you can see yeah. that a little bit. Yeah. But we're right at this moment we're shoving all that we're just kind of shoving a lot of water at it. And it's heading towards the lake and flooding that low spot where we just put them campsites. It's know. been flooding there for a lot of years. I don't know if we're gonna have a big fix to try it. But you think this would help if we would pursue this? Yeah. If we you think it would help those new pads and get yeah, some of that out of yes. it? Yes. And if you put in the curb and gutter on uh, Crescent Park, you know, get it to where it's not going right at those campsites. You know. And so the west side of Crescent Park Drive, um, are we going to be From able Pat, to... From Pat uh, Shugs? Are, well, for even up the hill, mm -hmm. are we going to be able to control this water more so it's not you know, going off into these properties that it's going to go down to the intersection or at least down the horseshoe? Yes. Uh, on Pat's side, if you put a curb and gutter, it'll go down to her neighbor's driveway and you can already see the he's got that cement that does this. It'll go down to that area uh, of the campground, but if you can get the dirt work and stuff to keep that flowing to the, to the north, it's going that way instead of right at your new pads and and campers. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you. And it can be done in like stages because once you get it to the horseshoe, to that intake, that intake, and the next intake right there in the horseshoe all go into the campground right now. But if you can get that going that way and then do another stage mm -hmm. to where you're going, keep it going north. Right. Okay. You should have dredged a little deeper. You should have. And put about two or three more feet in the camp. It would have helped. <laughs> we, uh, Too late now. Our, our Zoom connection is now working. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just, uh, just a couple things that we had talked at the previous meeting about having everything ready for our urban renewal plan amendment for this meeting. Okay, just that the proceedings aren't done with our uh, with our bond council. Okay. Okay. Just that, and uh, so you know we've we've used Dorsey and Whitney, we've used Bob Justin there for years and years, and Bob is having some real severe health issues. So we're, we're we're having to work with another partner in the firm now. So, um, it, but it will be it'll be ready for the next uh, next council meeting we anticipate. Really asking me. There's a couple of things got to roll around before the first of December. And um, just a reminder to everybody that Lakewood Partners R5 rezoning. Um, there's public notice out about that about the planning and zoning meeting, and that is next Monday. So it's the 27th of, of September to be here at 6:30, and uh, depending on the um, on the recommendation from the from the PNZ, would anticipate that to the council on October 10th. Um, we've given that as public notice. Um, you received a uh, a letter tonight about some some public input from uh, the department. And then uh, a couple things. Northwest Iowa League is this Thursday in Alta. Anybody interested in going to Alta? What is the program? Um, International shoot, Building Codes? Shoot us and Building Codes. Yeah. What's the other? Shoot us. State That's Urban cool. Design Standards. I tell you what, it, it, it's actually a really good program. Mm -hmm. It's a really good program. Is anybody else going? No, 
And then also Western Iowa Advantage is having their annual meeting, and that's October 6th. So that would be a Wednesday, October 6th. And uh, that would be an odd one. But we do need to RSVP for folks who might like to go to that. Is that the one that's showing those? And now not. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think that's it. That, uh, um, so it's the regional economic development group. When we get together with them once more. Yeah, what? Yeah, I think I got an email from her. So, what time is that? I'm up in the air, but I'll have to check. Yeah, it's an evening meeting. It's an evening meeting. It's not all day class. No, no, it's an evening meeting. Is it that so much more? I have to say, we went to Carroll, we went all night. Well, that one in Carroll was all day. Yeah, no. okay, then we're not talking about the same thing. It's just me and me. That is all, sir. Hey, how's our sewer? Sure. Sure. Okay. We're going. We're going. We're going. Yeah. Um, as of right now, it's doing okay. We're taking samples. Right now, I can't tell you how that bank is doing. Uh, it's been wet. Yeah. But we're meeting all our regulations that yeah. we're supposed to have right now. I have, a, I have a question about the nuisances. So we did those letters in May, mm -hmm. and I was going to bring them with me, and I forgot, Dave. So um, where are we at? I think it's sad that the library is going to put up a fence because we're not enforcing our own. You know, this is in, that we did in May. Um, if everybody abided by them, once we, we put out in May, since it's the ones that we did in May, yeah. That would be one on the highway? You think that's that, been that, abided by? That wasn't, there's no relation to that. To that one? But you need to have the info and we're not happy with it, right? What's that? Dave has to have the info if we're not happy with it, right? Yeah, the truth. Yeah. Because the letters came from Dave, right? Correct. Right. Okay. Maybe by the next council meeting we need to have something done with Anybody else? Motion to adjourn. Second. Being adjourned. All right. All right. Great. Thanks, everybody.